Welcome back to the GSTL. Currently, NS Hosa taking a 1-0 lead. Jokshi taking out his opponent. Early on, we're going to have an interview. See how the coach feels about Shine losing right away. And here we go to the left. We have the coach of NS Hosa on to the right. Coach. coach Lee, let's see what exactly they have to say about the first game and about the team match today. A 1 0 and his whole star is up against TSL after Shine. He's going to face another Zerg player in just a few seconds. In the team league, usually Chuck G plays against Protoss, but GSL, TSL doesn't have many good Protoss players, so Chuck G was put in the first as the first player because they knew that they would probably face a couple of Zergs early on. It's a really nice choice, and this explains already um, what we were wondering about. Usually being a sniper against Protoss, but this time against all those Zergs, they decided to put him in first. TSO coach is very sad that he lost Shine so early in today's match. He prepared very hard, but he wasn't able to perform as well as he practiced. So he's a little bit disappointed. Well, he went out with uh, with a bang, I'd say, because yeah. he just played very well. There were a couple of things that he did wrong in the engagements and the individual unit control, but still his overall strategy, how well he played and how thought out everything was, that really impressed me. NS Hosa has a very strong Terran lineup. So, our Zerg and Terran players studied their Terrans a lot and practiced for the versus Terran matchup. I want to know what he has on his sleeve against Jungle. That has to be one of the questions. <laughs> <laughs> I would ask it. And as well as the Terran players are very, very confident playing against Zerg. And also their Protoss players are confident against Zerg. So TSL is known that they have a lot of good Zerg players. And uh, well, and as well as I feel pretty confident today because they, this, the matchup against Zerg in general is just uh, one of the matchups that his team likes to Oh, they will get the chance to prove it. <laughs> <laughs> so. I am looking forward to it. This season they don't really think they have an ace player, but they think they have a very good chance of winning. All the players are really good and kind of on even terms. So it's not one player that really sticks out, it's just a team effort. Uh, basically saying a lot of players haven't really been able to show their skills yet because they haven't been in Kode, but he thinks Hyun is someone who really needs to, to show his skills and he probably will today. So, I think you know, this, that, that kind of statement leads us to believe we're going to see a pretty good game from Hyun today. Yeah, the, I actually like what he said here because he's perfectly right. This is exactly my opinion. Hyun is a great player. I said it before the break. The last time we saw him the GSCL, I think he underperformed a little bit. I expected more from him because so far, every single time that I watch Hyun play, he improves a little bit. He has this like progression curve that Moon also had. Like in the beginning, he was a little bit. He transitioned from Warcraft. Hyun transitioned yeah. from Brute War. Both of them have the skills, they have the mechanics, they have the micro, the macro, but they don't really. They didn't really know how to approach late game, for example. They lack the experience. Now they are slowly but steadily making up for that. They're getting more experience with the game. Adapt to StarCraft 2. And you can see how well they progress, especially Moon. But Hyun is another player who does really well. So when he showed us his game the last time in the GSTL, he was maybe a little bit out of shape. It was just a bad day, I don't know. But I was not too impressed. But I am... I know that this guy is amazing and I'm not sure if he's going to win against Chakchi but I'm pretty sure that we are going to see a very, very good and exciting game. Popping his jaw a little bit right now, but I have to say that I love his hairstyle. I knew you would say that. I knew it. It was on camera, and the first thing that I looked at was his hair. You know because what? Because by means? now, you, you actually, every single time I look at the hairstyle, it's your fault. It's yeah, like, so I feel means, awkward. I'm you're like, starting what? to you're starting to, to really pick up on these subtle differences, and that's really good. I'm proud of you. Wolf told me earlier. Well, you know what? For girls in Korea, there are exactly eight hairstyles. Yeah, there are eight. And I'm like, what? There are eight main hairstyles for girls in Korea. There are eight main hairstyles. Why would you know that? Well, this is like, what? <laughs> Everybody knows that, man.
No, no way. I can ask like 20 foreigners on the street, not a single one of them will know. Well, we'll find out if Hyun can tie things up here. TSL versus Sinus Hosa, Hyun versus Jokji. I am Wolf. With me is Calder. Let's go into Daybreak. One of the TVZ specialists in a lineup of Ennis Hosa starting to the top right of Daybreak in his second game. We have Ennis Hosa, Jack G. Such a good player in all matchups, really. Uh, you know, I I got, got why the coach put him out because no process, but I feel like it's almost short sighted to say something like, well, there's not a lot of process, so we thought we'd just use him first. Uh, at the bottom left, his Zerg opponent. The second Zerg that TSL has put out today, an old Brood War Pro, his ID is... TSL Kunt! Alright guys, we talked about it um, a couple of times already, but I think that a lot of you might not heard it just yet. So if you're currently watching live, if you're not watching the VUDs, you're always welcome uh, on IRC at QuakeNet. You can go to a hash GSL, talk about the games, talk about the matches, about the choices of players, about what the teams are going to do. So if you don't have an IRC client, you can also just Google for Web IRC and you will easily be able to uh, find a Java client for it. Go to QuakeNet and yeah. then connect to hash GSL and check to, it out. If you go to quakenet.org, in fact, just the website in your browser, you can join web chat there. Uh, and you can also, if you're on teamliquid.net, if you go to the bottom left, you can go to the web IRC page there, uh, and you can join Team Liquid's chat right away. And then afterwards, of course, uh, you can just go and join, just type slash join and then pound GSL, whatever you want to call it. So. Yeah, there are always a couple of people in there, and it's always nice if you can discuss what's happening uh, on screen with a few fellow StarCraft 2 fans. Yeah, it's always better to watch with friends, you know, talk with people about the matches. If you don't have anyone with you at your house right now, you're like sitting there with your cat, but your cat doesn't know that much about StarCraft. You're like trying to explain to your cat about like really why you like how many sport callers we saw last game, but your cat's like just not really listening. Get on IRC. Your cat's not going to talk to you about it. Well, Brando, if you're currently watching, he actually named his cat Carrigan. That's that, pretty cool. That is so cool, but yeah, he's al he's always watching. I'm not quite sure if he was watching GSTL, but he's watching Kodas. So, well, right now, we have um, uh, one barracks into expand for Jokchi. Oh, and a fake bunkering going down here. Yeah, that's what he's doing, and he's trying to put a pressure on. But so far, Hyun is like, nah, you're not really going to do this. But he had two drones already out on the map trying to scout, as he did not see his opponent's barracks. So that was very well done by Jokchi. He hit his barracks was not spotted and therefore Sh uh, Hyun had to assume that there might be something going on like maybe a little bit of aggression here with the double barracks play so he scouted everywhere sent a second drone out lost a little bit of mining time and Jachi kinda he achieved what he was trying to do yeah he certainly did uh, I, I think this type of fake pressure a lot of people don't like because they're like well it's a lot of mining lost from the SCB but I think it's, it's much worse for the Zerg and just the fear that it puts into the Zerg's heart Double command center coming out here for Jokshi as he double gas. He's like cutting every corner, man. He's like, I mean, if Crust were corners, he's actually doing that thing that your mother tells you not to do because Crust is actually good for you. And it doesn't taste that bad, really. What do you, what's your opinion on Crust? Do you, did you take the Crust off of your sandwiches when you were a kid? Like, you know, cut the, the edges of the, the bread off, or did you just Well, the thing is, in Europe, we have, like, real bread. Yeah, okay, all right. See, I knew, I knew this is what you were going to say, and actually, no, but it's, true. It's, it's, it's true. Yeah, it's true. That's so, actually the, the good bread, man. There's no, like, bad parts to cut off. Uh, yeah, the crust is actually awesome, and I don't know why with, with like, I, I don't know. All right, what about pizza? The pizza crust. No, I, the pizza I crust? eat the crust. I like, I like the crust, and it sounds so weird to me that someone would actually cut off the crust from bread that you toast, because there is no real crust. Right. It's just like, if you compare it to like real bread, you have, and I know to the Americans this will sound weird talking about real bread, and they're like, what is he talking about real bread? But in, uh, in Germany and in Europe in general, you actually have 
<laughs> I don't know what else you guys, to call well, it. It's you real you bread. Don't use, you guys don't use sliced bread, basically. You guys don't use this, this bread that comes in a loaf that's pre-sliced, made for making a sandwich that people cut Bill, the crust off with peanut butter and jelly. You guys don't No, do you that. use it and we have it, but it's for us, it's not real bread. It's something that you don't eat to actually... They call it air bread, right, if I'm not mistaken? No, we, we just call it toasted bread. Okay. Toast bread. Okay. So that's that's the expression for it, and you you kind of eat it in the morning as part of the breakfast if you if you fancy it if you are just, if you want it, but it's not what you usually would eat if you really want to have some kind of toast or whatever. Okay, well I'm glad that you and I are on the same page here. Like I know you don't really have toast in Europe, but you don't you eat your pizza crust. The only argument I ever had for someone saying they didn't want to eat the pizza crust, they're like, well I'm at a pizza buffet and I have to save room. I'm like, but. It's not like what this is about, <laughs> but okay, I guess like I guess I see your point. If you want to eat as much pizza as possible, if you're like trying to eat as much cheese, it's like well the crust doesn't taste as good. Okay, fine. That's like the only argument I've ever heard. Do you know what I like currently? Of uh, letting the, the well, I think we finished about talking about bread, yeah, and crust, are, and pizza. We're but good the, here. The, yeah, but the thing that I really like here um, is that Jakchi is actually not heading straight for some kind of medivac transition. He builds up a few of his uh, well. A few Hellions, but immediately starts with a double engineering base that they can start with his upgrades. He has plus one, plus one already on its way. The problem that I have with this build is that you, once again, are very, very vulnerable against Roach Baneling. This is something that, uh, this is a gamble that a lot of Terran players take. With a greedy opening that Jakshi used, he doesn't have the siege tanks, he will not have them at all. So if there was actually some kind of aggression by his opponent with a Roach Bailing bust, then he would be in a lot of trouble because he has not a lot to defend against it. He would have, need, he needs, the only chance that he ha would have had is lift up the command center, bring in the main base, control the choke point, but he has so many buildings on the low ground Oh, well, he this, would have lost. This could be devastating again. Nice nah, wall, though. Fine. Um, you're right, and I mean he went, he went third command center with double gas and then double e bays yeah. before double barracks. So he had like one barracks and a factory going up with two e bays without even a second barracks. He had nothing. He had no units. He had like no marines, no siege tanks. He was in a position where any aggression would have. Just, I mean, it would have slapped him down with the building. But that's thing. the thing about Starcraft 2 as well. You, uh, all, you have to take gambles sometimes. And when you scout and you have a good read on what your opponent does, and the TSL players, most of them play similar at least with the openings. So you have like this idea of what your opponent is going to do, and then you act accordingly. And this time, this gamble really pays off. But Hyun is going for a different style than Chine. We have a different map, so this time we have this ba Ling, Bane, Ling, and Mutalisk style that Hyun really likes Hyun to play. Hyun is always, he always plays this style. He loves this also, again, on, on uh, Antigua. He likes the style a lot. The problem that we had on Antigua sometimes is that he misses the time to transition into a late game scenario. And we've seen players like July do this. Stay on Ling, Bane, Ling, Mutalisk and try to make it happen throughout the entire course of the game and then run out of steam at some point when the Terran player suddenly has this huge upgrade lead. And speaking of upgrades, Jakshi has won one and is not just starting the plus two plus two upgrades. A little bit delayed with the second wave out, uh, still in very good shape, and this attack is well timed. Yeah, this is actually really well timed. He's gonna hit before plus one is done for those links. It's about to finish though, and he's gonna have to pick up. There's way too much, but he has enough to get out of there, losing just a few units. But I, I feel like um, it's, it's something I noticed about him last game as well is that. Yeah, his plus 1-1 one, one is so fast, it's like, oh wow, he's gonna have this huge upgrade lead, but then his 2-2 two, two has always started so late because he's doing too many things. He's like trying to add tanks, get stim. He, he canceled his combat shields even last game before he started 2-2, two, two. And, and this type of, of play, uh, I feel it could be so much better if he got the 2-2 two, two a little bit faster, you can have a better upgrade lead. I want to come back to this drop, uh, to this attack for a, a quick second. He lost to Hellions, but still, it was a very well-timed attack. Hyun was ready, but the thing is, Jakchi doesn't lose anything here. He knows that the Mutalists are not out. This is not a drop that is designed to kill, or not an attack that is designed to kill you. It's an attack that is poking, is trying to do damage, and at the same time, safe enough because you know there won't be Mutalists. So you can actually retreat. He goes in, he picks off every single unit as he realizes he won't do damage, there are too many units, and then he backs off. But now we have Hyun with the Mutalists. Now they are on the map, and he attacks immediately the one Missile turret tries to do damage here, tries to poke, tries to control the map now with the Mutalist, goes for plus two, plus two, as does Jack G. 
very strategic game. Once again, I like Chuck G's uh, reaction so far. He started with a little bit of a greedy build. He got away with it. And right now, he's just trying to make this happen using the tank marine composition and nice timings with this Metavax. Yeah, uh, the turrets were well placed. He had two at the north of his base, which you guys have probably seen several times on camera by now, as well as the one on the left side. Didn't expect an attack to the left, he expected more to his mineral line. And he's only remaking... Okay, so he's now got the second one coming up here. I like this. Two group, two turrets per area is very, very nice because it takes so much longer to kill them and buys them that critical time because you cannot ignore two. You cannot fly over that comfortably. Oh, nice map awareness here. He almost caught some mutas. He did force the stim there, but... He's very, very controlling with these Marines. He knows exactly where his opponent's going to be at any given point in time. 2-2 two, two finishing up a little bit faster for Jokji here, so he's going to have a slight upgrade lead. But this time, Hyun is transitioning. He's not playing too long with, the, with this style. He's got the Infestation Pit done, and I like this. I like this a lot. Hive is on its way now. We have Pathogen Glance, Hive, and oh, look at all these. Oh my god. This is 47 bandings that he has, and we saw a lot of these attacks just lately when the Zerg player is trying to just crush his opponent with tons of banelings. But this time we have tanks, and tanks are the one thing that he cannot engage with banelings. As soon as you have the splash damage with the tank, he will just obliterate everything you have. If he sieged up. That's the big if that we have. And let's see how Hyun is going to approach this. Look at these numbers. Oh my god. 65 failings and 100 circlings. Jakchi is moving out as Hyun is moving in. But oh, they are meeting it. Oh my god. If Oh he's on my seat. god. Oh, he's going back, but it's too late. There's 106 circlings running in here. The failings, though, at the back, some of them go off. And I mean, I would say probably enough of them went off. And I don't know, man, the game's not <laughs> over yet. But the game is not over but yet. But it no. may very well be, as all of these banelings are ripping through the production right now. He's actually not wasting a second with these banelings. Oh, my. Oh, wow. That actually hurt. That and hurts whoever, a lot. Whoever plucked this windscreen certainly got a glimpse of the future right there because here they come. The banelings and the circlings. They're marines. That they is, die. That is going to be it as the seed tanks are being cleaned up. There's only marines left. He forces him back, but the big story here is that Jokchi currently, even though he has mules, is down to 24 harvesters against 70. And with this bank and all these means, Forbesman streaming in, doubling the supply of his opponent. 40 more Zerlings on the way. It's going to put him back yeah. up to 100. He is going to continue to attack the natural where there's no real defense. He's going to go into that production. He's not going to attack the third because there's a wall there. There's a bunker. But he's going to attack again. He's got five infestors on the way. As soon as these banelings are done, he's going to go right into the main base, destroy as many barracks as he can, and then he will seal the deal. Smartly, Joxy is trying to set up a defense. He still has all three command centers. Like you said, he lost so many harvesters, but he's got all the command centers. He's setting up a defense of his natural again, but I don't know if he's going to have enough. He will have to fall back to his mules. That's exactly what he's going to try now. He will try to get his economy up, will try to play passive, maybe send out a dropshipper, that is, a dropshipper too, in order to do a little bit of pressure. We saw live do this yesterday. But the bungle is spot on. That is some true dealer play right there, leaving the investors for defense. And now, of course, Hyun has a lot of options. He's on Hive Tech. He made the transition. He made this. He started this attack, but at the same time, he started to transition already. I love it. And now we have Brood Lords and, of course, Ultralis. Yeah, both of them. He knows he's that far ahead. He's not going to be dealing with a big push that can kill him while he's doing that. In fact, you'll probably see him take a fifth base soon. Nice position here by Joxy, trying to pick off some of these units. He's got a nice retreat path where he goes up into a choke point. I really, really like how he's poking at these units. They knows are there. At this point, defend your bases. Get a fifth. Build spine crawlers. Build spore crawlers. Play it safe. Don't overcommit here. Yeah. If he attacks with his army and there are siege tanks set up, a Terran player can make this work. If he has bunkers and siege tanks, you can make this work. Jokchi is way behind of his opponent, but he's not out of the game just yet. He lost so much, but with the mules, with three orbitals, he is able to get this economy going. So overcommitting here may, might be a mistake. Of course, you can try to crush him, but playing it safe would be the better option. He's going to go into the third base. He knows the fences are mostly set up at the natural, yeah. as this was originally the stronghold, but now it's not. And, you know, that was an okay trade. The supply evening up a little bit more. 
Four jumps, she now gets a Raven. Fifth base, we have Adrenal Glance, plus three, plus three, Katina's Plating. Get everything you need, spread your creep. Use the extra minerals that you have. Build Spine Crawlers, build Spore Crawlers. Drop Play is the one thing that can kill you now, that can actually make you a huge, uh, give you a huge problem. But now we have those Overlords at the bottom. They see the Drop Play, he has to retreat with a few units, and where are those extra Spine and Spore Crawlers? He yeah, that them. is the question right now. He does have one Spore and enough Queens to deny this drop at the south, but his base in the north is something of a concern. He's got a few Zerlings there. He has to be very careful with moving close. He's got to keep his units on hold position, because in the middle of the map, if a few Marines bait him into those siege tanks, he's going to lose everything. And right now, Jachi is just turtling, trying to remax so he can force his way out to the fourth. Yeah. But the five Broodlords, those are going to be the problem. Those are going to be where he can start sieging up and attacking these bases. He's getting baited a little bit here, though. He has to be so careful. But now the Broodlords are here, and they are going to shut this down. No more baiting to be had. And here we go, the, well, the Ravens are not done just yet, Jachi tries to be a little bit annoying here with energy units. He knows that he will not be able to get a fourth base here. This is something that Chi uh, that Kian will not allow. Yeah, he will not allow it. He has to get max before he can even hope for that. Corvid Reactor going to finish with these Ravens. The Corvid Reactor not going to be done in time to give these Ravens the energy. He's actually forced him out of the position he was in, and now he's going to go in with some fungals. I love how he's not sending his Banelings for though he knows there's not enough. There's not enough oh. oh, that was a mistake. Yeah, some huge failing hit, but here they go again, trying to stim in. And of course, we have the dropship. We talked about it. That is the one thing he's vulnerable to, and Chakchi is trying to exploit it. Hyun is on the move, trying to make this happen, trying to end the game. And he does G -G. A great, great attack early on, uh, and uh, Jokchi is just too far behind. He holds on a little bit longer to the game because he knows he has a slight chance of recovering if his opponent over extends himself. That's not going to happen, and that's, that's one. Uh, that's one happy panda. And there is our real win. <laughs> yeah, that's the win. <laughs> the the first one they didn't show in the booth. I was like, well, I guess they're not going to show it twice. I mean, <laughs> that was actually like. I mean, I know that wasn't intentional, but it was like so perfect for the moment, man. That was perfect. <laughs> Production try apparently hitting the wrong button at the same time was was funny. I'm like Jay. I like that. That was <laughs> clever. <laughs> All right, so I think there are a couple of TSL fans in the production team. <laughs> at least some Zerg fans for sure. Well, that ties us up. We're at 1 1 now, and now NS Hosa is going to have to pick one of the players. It looks like they weren't really banking on Jock today. They feel that he's only strong against Protoss, so they wanted to use him first as a starting player, see what he can do. Um, and, you know, maybe Inori comes out, but obviously Inori's not going to come out against someone like that. Entombed Valley, now that Jockchi's gone. They're ready to put their own Protoss out. I yeah. think we may see Tassadar. We could see Sage or San as well, though. San, I think, um, you know, probably most known in Korea for his PVZ, but he's known for PVT as well. His PVZ is where he kind of got his name for himself. With his carrier play, he was one of the first players to be going for the Mothership early on with Vortex in Korea. We saw him do this against Nest T in one of the uh, earlier Code S seasons on Shakura's Plateau, I believe it was. So he's known for his PVZ. That's definitely going to be an interesting thing because right now, of course, the Protoss player is very, very likely, as we just said, and uh, they have two sitting on their bench. Actually, they have three, don't... No. NSO has three. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, that's going to be a good one. And uh, I don't know, what I, what would I do against against Hyun here? It's always difficult against, uh, well, against TSL in general because of all these Zerg players. But as the coach earlier said, both his uh, Terran and his Protoss feel really comfortable against... Zerg, so I guess that we are definitely going to see a Protoss play here. That was would also be the option of just trying to go for some kind of ZZ play. Yeah, can do. Don't Certainly have to, possible. but use the map advantage to uh, well, the map to your advantage is something that you always should do. So let's see who's going to be oh, sitting on the top, top left. right, man. He's drinking hot six first. There we go. In fact, going to be Sage, not San. The Sage and Son actually have like the same glasses. Their hair is slightly different though. Sage a little bit. There uh, you can see, well, sorry for interrupting you, but the shot that we just got, the three big hitters right now, we have Hyun, we have Symbol and Paul to set them in the picture, all of them. Yep. And uh, Sage, his hair is slightly curlier. His Protoss play is slightly newer. He's a little bit more famous than Son these days. In Code B currently, of course. And uh, was once a Code S player, but lost and then fell out of Code A. 
You know what? This surprises me a little bit because in all the Code A qualifiers that we had him just lately, he did not really perform well. And I, I did not watch the game, so I don't know exactly what happened. But he lost, I think, in the first round of the Code A qualifier. So the choice is a bit weird to me. I think he lost to a Zerg player as well. I don't know about the rest of his performance since then. Obviously, the Code A qualifier was already a few weeks ago, so he uh, could have improved a lot. But the last games that I... Let's say the, the yellow keys on his keyboard yeah, was impressed about me more than his style. I was about to say something about those yellow keys. Whoa, where did those come from? It's not like he's a bad player, don't get me wrong, guys. But the thing is, against Tian, it's not going to be easy. And he might well win this match. Uh, that's not. Uh, but I think that the other options that Enesosa has right now are a little bit better. But we'll see. Uh, whenever a coach makes a choice that seems a little bit weird, the most of the time it's because the coach knows better than we do, and that may be something that we, we see. Like, he may suddenly be doing great against Zergs all the time, and, and he's got a mostly Zerg opponent team to, to face. I just think he's vulnerable against this style that Hyun uses. Uh, uses. Hyun is a player that loves Mutalisk against all races. He's and a Muta I've player, man. I've seen a few, a few games uh, where Sage was facing Muta play, and he lost most of them. So. I might just have caught the wrong games, like games where he uh, fell off a little bit. That's also an option, of course. But that's something that worries me right now if I think about the next match. But, well, we're already getting too far ahead of ourselves. Entombed Valley is the next map. It's game number three. The score currently tied between TSL and NS Horsa. And now, well, Jan has to prove himself again. You know what impressed me about Jan every single time? Watch his posture during the, uh, during the game. He's always like sitting like really, really straight up, and yeah. uh, this impressed me. And you know, if that's not enough, check out his hairstyle because it looks really good. Like, if it gets a little bit longer, he's gonna have to cut it. But right now, man, it is at its optimal length. Let's find you out. You would know. I would know, man. Let's find out what he is gonna do on Entombed Valley. Some call it Vortex Valley. Great map for Pros versus Zerg. This is the GSTL with Calder and Wolf. <laughs> 